Happy Monday, folks, and welcome back to WWE Network and Show, where every single week right here on the show, I give my candid thoughts and all the latest content on the WWE Network, all the original programming, and today we're talking the latest episode of WWE Ride Along that aired last week after Raw called Jericho's Final Ride. As you could tell, the final ride of Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens prior to their split in the Friendship Festival, or the Festival of Friendship, rather, from earlier this year. This was taped immediately following the roadblock end of the line pay-per-view in Pittsburgh, I think, or Philadelphia, one of the two, in Pennsylvania. I think the same time that the Sami Zayn and Neville episode was taped that aired many months ago, but they aired this one only just recently. This is my first review of a ride-along episode in a few weeks, um, but it was a good one. This one was well worth checking out. I thought Kevin Owens really, I thought, was the star of WWE this week, or last week, rather. Um, I know the women main evented every show, and that's amazing and all, but Kevin Owens, between this episode of Ride Along and Talking Smack on Tuesday, was really, in my opinion, the star of WWE TV last week, and you'll find out why momentarily. So, like I said, taped right after Roadblock, end of the line, so to kind of give you a timeline here, um, on, I think, December... 18th, December 17th, one of the two, December 19th, around that time period, in late December of 2016. In the two cars, you have Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens, of course, and in the other car, you have Tom Phillips, Corey Graves, and Nia Jax, who seems like, it, it seems like an odd couple, an odd trio on paper, but they have amazing chemistry together. Nia Jax is nothing like she's on TV, which is a good thing. I am no fan of the Nia Jax on air character, I'm just not a fan but as a person, she seems like a sweetheart, um, and she had great chemistry and amazing conversations here with both Tom Phillips and Corey Graves. Uh, to kick us off here, Kevin Owens remembers being in attendance for the Royal Rumble 2015, and the reason they talk about that, or 14 rather, is because that event emanated from the same exact arena, the uh, PPG or something dumb like that arena in Pittsburgh, or I think Philly, I think it's Pittsburgh, I'm not, or no, it is, it is, it is Philadelphia, I think. Again, I'm definitely mixing up the two, but he talks about being in attendance for that show three years ago, and they say poor Rey Mysterio, who came out at number 30, and they talk about the whole the whole huge issue with Daniel Bryan not entering the Rumble, and they booed Rey Mysterio because he came out at 30 when people thought Daniel Bryan would come out. Even all these years later, people are still talking about it, including Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho, because it was a massive fucking problem. Uh, Corey Graves were cut to his car, and they talk about him living in Connecticut after moving away from Pittsburgh. And he says that Connecticut is colder than Pittsburgh. I've never been, I don't think, to Pittsburgh. I've definitely been to Philadelphia. Never been to Pittsburgh, but I assume it's the same temperature. But he is absolutely correct. It gets fucking cold here in the winters. And this is December. It was cold here. It is cold here in the Northeast for a solid eight months out of the year. It's not like a good six and six where it's good six months warm slash, you know, cool, whatever, and six months cold. No, it, it's friggin' cold up until, like, early May. That's how bad it is up in here in Connecticut, and really the Northeast in general, by and large. Um, he acts as a tour guide as they're going through Pittsburgh. He knows a lot of the ways, uh, a lot of the restaurants around and bars and stuff like that, and he gives Nia Jax and Tom Phillips a quick tour as they're driving through. Um, he talks about his old dating routine, going to a movie, doing this, doing that, and then never talking to the girl again. Classic Corey Graves. Chris Jericho shares a funny Mark Henry story. I think that he might have told elsewhere. I don't remember what the exact story, what the story exactly entailed, but it was pretty good though. So he sure he shares a quick story about Mark Henry. Kevin Owens shares a quick story about Ryback, um, which this I did not know. I thought Kevin Owens would have shared this by now in like an interview or something, but I guess not. So he talks about how in, I think it was late 2015, when those two were feuding over the Intercontinental Championship going into Night of Champions, or, yeah, Night of Champions, Clash of Champions only debuted uh, last year. So anyway, they're doing a promo heading up to the pay-per-view backstage in a backstage segment, and uh, Ryback has like an apple in his hand, or Kevin Owens did, and Ryback took it from him, and then he was supposed to squeeze the apple, and it's a lot more difficult than you might think, apparently. I've never tried it personally. But uh, Ryback tried to do it, and, and, you know, Kevin Owens suggested that he take off his gloves, but he said Ryback wears gloves, or whatever. So he kept on the gloves, and he couldn't break the apple. It didn't work, so whatever. I thought that was funny. Um, I'm surprised Ryback hasn't confirmed or denied the story as of right now, as of this recording on his own podcast, so I guess we'll have to wait and see. Nia Jax, meanwhile, discusses breaking into the business and then getting into a car accident, which I remember. I forgot it was Nia Jax, but Corey Graves says he forgot too, but uh, and then he says he might weave that into his commentary for future Nia Jax matches, which wouldn't really work 
as a heel at this point in time, maybe when she eventually turns babyface, if she ever goes babyface. But yeah, she was. It was about three years ago in the summer of 2014, I think with The Rock's mom or grandmother. I think it was his mother and, uh, and Nia Jax. And neither were like seriously hurt. You know, both are still alive, obviously. Um, but it, it was right after Nia Jax started with WWE, so it was pretty weird timing. I mean, the whole thing was uh, was pretty bad. I mean, it was a pretty shocking development, and thankfully they were okay. But I completely forgot about that until she brought it up here. Kevin Owens talks about how it's still surreal for him and even Chris Jericho being in the WWE and working with Chris Jericho and whatnot. And just, you know, it's still surreal for them and doing all these different things and whatnot, working with a guy that he grew up idolizing, which was really cool to hear him say. Corey Graves says he admits to uh, hate farting in front of other people. He says it's the most awkward thing. He doesn't do it. He hates when other people does it, uh, when other people do it too. So hating in front of other, uh, and uh, he, he hates farting in front of other people. So keep that in mind for Corey Graves. That was an interesting tidbit there, I believe. Uh, so we go on from there. Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens, they talk about their first moment together as a tag team in England. I mean, it was before they officially formed the Jericho tag team, which didn't come until like late July, early August of last year before the whole feud with Enzo and Cass at SummerSlam. Um, I know a lot of people probably know what I'm talking about as or know what they, they're talking about, rather. They had teamed on a random episode of SmackDown in like April and England, as they said. And I think it was them versus Dean Ambrose and Kevin Owens, or sorry, Dean Ambrose and uh, Sami Zayn. And then afterwards, and I know RJ and I joke about this all the time, so afterward when they're celebrating their victory, Kevin Owens, being the big guy he is, just I guess he did this all the time in the indies too, he just randomly jumped into the arms of Jericho, who was not expecting it, and um, Kevin Owens goes to Jericho, you're the GOAT. And then Jericho says to Kevin Owens, you're the donkey. And he's like, yeah, whatever. And then he just raises his hand up in the air, and that was just pure magic. And even at that time, I think we all recognized how hilarious that was. And uh, that later led to them teaming up at SummerSlam. And they were a tag team for a long time after that. They were a tag team at the time this was filmed back in December. Uh, They talk about Steve Cutler. Corey Graves does, I think. Um, Yeah, it's the Corey Graves story. It's not in the Kevin Owens car. So Corey Graves says that uh, Steve Cutler, who I think is still there, um, one of their local, not local guys, but one of their up-and-coming developmental talents, he had pooped his pants in a match with Mojo Rawley, apparently. I don't know how long ago, how long or so ago it was. It must have been, like, when Mojo Rawley first arrived on the scene. Maybe it was recently. I don't know. I I saw the footage, um, and I wish it didn't. But um, they had showed the footage of the match. I mean, based off how Mojo Raleigh looks, you can probably tell when it was. If he has the shorter hair, it might be for more recently. But it was in NXT, so I don't know how long ago it was, but that was weird. So they're talking about farting and poopings and all this other weird shit, um, which is why I think this episode is great. Corey Graves, again, talking about weird. From there, we go into Corey Graves talking about uh, piercing his own penis because apparently he was a piercer for a long time, if that's what the job title is called, a piercer. He did a lot of piercings growing up, and he had to pierce a lot of penises, so he pierced his own uh, to see how it would work or some weird shit like that. Less said about this, the better, but yeah, talk about a weird conversation. They talk about farting in front of other people, pooping your trunks, and piercing your own penis. So that is the ride-along episode for you here, but that's not it's not over yet. It's far from over. So Jericho talks about, uh, he shares his history with Bob Backlund. Why they talk about Bob Backlund, I completely forget. But it was a funny story, though. So Jericho says to Bob Backlund, this is pretty recently, because it was around the time that Bob Backlund's autobiography came out, which I think was either late 2015 or early 2016, because I own a copy. He signed it for me when I met him a second time about a year and a half ago. So anyway, he was talking to Bob Backlund backstage, which must have been about a year ago, because Bob Backlund at that point came back to the company, and I uh, was working with Darren Young, and he still is, but Darren Young's out hurts, which is why you haven't seen Backlund on TV in quite a while. But he wanted to talk to Backlund on his podcast and um, talk to him on his podcast about his book and his history. And Backlund had to give him a book or whatever. He said, could you sign it for me? And Backlund's like, sure, whatever. And he's asked him what his name was. And Jericho's like, you've known me for 20 years. How do you not know my name? I mean, that's typical Backlund, I guess. But that was pretty funny. So they talk about their history with Bob Backlund. Um, maybe it's because Bob Backlund, like, walked around, like, Pittsburgh or something when he was doing the whole presidential heel thing in the mid-90s. Maybe that's how they arrived in the topic. I'd have to rewatch the episode, but I think that's maybe why they started talking about him. Nia Jax then talks about a relationship with Byron Saxton and then calls him on the phone. So apparently they have this really weird relationship. I don't know if either of them are in a, like, legitimate relationship. 
definitely not with each other, but I'm not sure if they're dating other people or whatever. So Nia Jax talks about his, or her relationship rather, with Byron Saxton and how she calls him up, or he calls her up more often than not. Uh, I don't know if he calls her baby and stuff, but it's a very, like, relationship, but not really a relationship kind of relationship, if that makes sense. I know it doesn't, but you'd have to see it to believe it. It's just, this is priceless. So she calls him up on the phone, and he's acting all sexual and all weird on the phone with her, and he has no idea that he's on speaker with Tom Phillips and Corey Graves in the car. So he must have gotten ribbed beyond all belief after this happened. Um, and he's like, uh, when are you going to be by and waiting for you at the hotel, all this other weird shit. And she's trying to hold back from laughing. And it was really weird. It was really, really weird. I can't exactly, um, go by the exact details of the conversation they had just because I can't remember. But again, it was weird slash funny at the same time. Tom Phillips and Corey Graves, again, they're on speaker and Byron Saxon has no idea they're even in the car with her. Um, but they're just trying to refrain from laughing. It's that priceless. Jericho then talks about getting caked in the face on his birthday in Germany at a live event, which was pretty great, after Kevin Owens saying him a happy birthday and then getting caked in the face by Seth Rollins. And then Kevin Owens was two, and they were just slipping all over the ring like the beer, uh, like the Stone Cold Steve Austin beer moment on Raw where he sprayed McMahon and the rest of the roster with beer in the middle of the ring, and then Jericho was slipping all over the ring on the cake like it was beer, kind of emulating that. And then they talk about, uh, I think they arrive in Columbus for Raw the next night or whatever, and they talk about the 4th of July food fight that happened on 4th of July on Raw last year, which was honestly one of my favorite things of 2016 for WWE. I thought that was great. For as dumb as it might have been on paper, I thought they made that thing great. If only for Jericho, who was awesome, as usual, and especially Kevin Owens, who just went underneath the table as the food fight got underway. He said he hated it because he got food all over his shoes and it would have stunk up his shoes, so he just threw them away. I think it was him who said that, not Chris Jericho. So during the course of the food fight, during the course of the food fight, right as it starts, he goes under the table with a bag of Lay's chips, which I almost died laughing when that happened. I thought that was priceless. And then at the end of it, after everyone leaves and he gets up, he's like, "Oh, I, I must have won or whatever." Then he gets pied in the face by someone who we never found out. He's still trying to find out. They never come to a proper conclusion here. And I think he even brought that up, like, on Talking Smack or so, I think a couple days ago, like, the day after this aired. And uh, we still never found out who pied him in the face, even all these months later. Almost exactly a year later, you know, a year ago tomorrow, um, it was. So I guess it's kind of fitting that we talk about it on the, uh, on the day before 4th of July, on the day before 4th of July. But I thought that was great. I thought it was a great moment for them to talk about because that was a awesome, phenomenal food fight. One of the more fun moments on Raw in recent memory. And, um... Yeah, they talk about joking. They jo they joke about having their own buddy cop movie. Then it closes out the episode. We get a mock buddy cop movie with Jericho and Owens after they arrive at the hotel and all these clips put together like a, Jer uh, a Jericho buddy cop movie that would never come to fruition. So uh, this was a great episode. Ride-alongs are usually enjoyable to kind of see the wrestlers outside of the ring. The last one I talked about, the Cruiserweight one, was kind of cut and dry. There wasn't a lot to watch for there. That was definitely below average. But more often than not, they're pretty good. Um, you see a lot of more, you, you see a lot more personality from these people, from the wrestlers, than you would on TV. More often than not, especially from Jericho here, they were great. Especially from Nia Jax and Tom Phillips and Corey Graves. If you don't end this episode as a Nia Jax fan, at least outside of the ring, then there's something wrong with you. She came across great on this show, as did Graves, despite his weird obsession talking about poop and farts and penises and shit. Um, as did Tom Phillips, as did Jer uh, uh, Jericho, Chris Jericho, Kevin Owens. I thought it was great. It was an awesome episode overall. Definitely check it out when you can. Uh, one of those more laid-back episodes. I think it lasts about 15, 20 minutes, as they usually do. They're always a lot of fun, so check it out when you can on the WWE Network. Aired last week after Raw. This week after Raw, again, I'm not really sure. I find this shit out like the day of, um, after I record these shows. So whatever is airing tonight after Raw, we'll talk about it next week. And uh, if nothing airs, then we'll just talk about some other random thing on the network to review for WWE Network and chill. I do know that in two weeks, there is... Is it two weeks? Yeah, two weeks from today, we're having a new Bring It to the Table. So whatever is airing tonight and next week, I have no idea, but we'll find out as it airs tonight. So that being said, guys, have an awesome rest of your week. Enjoy 4th of July tomorrow. I'm Graham G.S. Matthews, and I'll catch your ass down the road.